Who's in? Who's out? You never know. Could it be the NFL's uh, number one passing raider? Could it be the person that is sitting there blowing up this season? Is it the best receiver in the league? Is it the best quarterback in the league? Who knows? But with that being said, you already know we got the NFL power rankings. So you already know what we're about to do. Kill the music. introduce you to the coldest panel in the game. Ah, the Mamba's gone. I want to give a little shout out. Happy birthday to the Mamba's wife. Ah, the coach is gone. But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Because I got my guy. I got my guy. He runs through my brains, y'all. He runs through my brains. Dallas Cowboys fan. Dallas Cowboy Realist. I'm not even going to have to say this one. Yankees fan. Yankees Realist. My guy. My guy. Daryl T. What's good with you, fellow? We see him. We see him. It's still baseball season over here, too. But we going in about football as well. Let's go. You already know. I got Daryl T. I got me, Michael T., the source of life over the mic. You know what you need to do. Hit that like and subscribe button. It's only $3.99. Ah, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. The NFL Power Rankings. We're going to do this the Skybox time. This is going to be the Skybox way. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Number 10. Not going to lie. Number 10. They already carved us up. They carved us up twice. And right now, he is leading the league in touchdowns. Baker Mayfield. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number nine. I'm going to say this team will be is a dangerous team ever since he's come out of that injury. And I'm telling you right now, they're only going on the rise. I'm telling you right now, they're only going to get better. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers. Number eight. Number eight has been. The Skybox Shocker. And they have been performing. Man, they went through a buzzsaw just last week. But they're still in the top 10. What I'm talking about is the Washington Commanders. Number seven. Right now, Kirk Cousins and them boys, they're looking like a well-oiled machine right now down there in the ATL. They they might go out there and make a lot of noise. Little by little, they look like Super Bowl contenders. I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons. Number six. They seem like they are coming back up. They're just climbing right back up in, in because they went out there and they got their W. They got the W against the J E T S Jets 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 just in time. By the way, I'm talking about I'm talking about Buffalo Bills. Number five, number five. It seems like they don't they don't miss a beat. They don't miss a beat at all. Even though they have Nico Collins on the IR. They still haven't missed the beat because they still got Joe Mixon back and they are going to be balling, which they are right now. They got the boy CJ Stroud. I'm talking about the Houston Texans. Number four. It's easy and simple right now. They're not playing no more games. They're not playing no more games. They went out there and put a shellacking. A shellacking on the Dallas Cowboys, 47-9. Hmm. 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 
Now I say, man, I'm not playing no more games. You already know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about those Detroit Lions. Number three, they got Lamar Jackson, and they got him right behind him, King Henry. He also had a stellar defense. Right now, they're looking like what everybody thought they were. And that is the Baltimore Ravens. Number two, they're 5-0. and oh. They're not playing any games. But we want to see what are they going to be coming out of this bye. They've got Detroit, knock, knock, ready to rock. So let's see what they come out looking like out of this bye. We're talking about the Minnesota Vikings. Number one spot. As long as you're the champ, you can't be beat. You got to keep the number one spot. You're 5 and 0. You're the only one standing. Two time champion. I'm talking about Kansas City Chiefs. Here's the list. Here's the list. Let's go. Let's go get them. You already know what to do. Comment below. Talk to me. Who do you think should be on and off the list? Daryl, which team do you, has shocked you thus far in this season? Uh... <clears throat> I'd say uh, the team that shocked me the most probably would be the Commanders. Not that they really shocked me, is that they got to this level as quick as they did. You know what I mean? They started get they started uh, restructuring their whole organization, different owner. You know what I mean? Head coach, quarterback. So you know what I mean? They they got it together way quicker than I thought. You could always tell a good head coach. When uh, somebody was a DC and he goes to another team and, and the good head coaches, the players follow him. And a lot of players that were on Dallas followed Dan Quinn, rightfully so. And now they, they turn the corner that I thought was going to be maybe mid season, but you see week two, week three, it was up there with the, with the Ravens. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to them. I, I, that hurts to say as a uh, Cowboys fan. But. I bet it does. I bet it does. Well, looking at, the NFL world, a couple trades happened. I won't really call them out of nowhere. One definitely kind of out of nowhere. Amari Cooper going to the Bills and Devontae Adams going to the Jets. Which one of those trades do you think is going to be the bigger the bigger impact? I mean, it's a it's it's the Jets trade. You know what I mean? That's um I mean the 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 impact you'll be able to see when they when they spread uh, Garrett Wilson out one side and and Devonte Adams out on another, and then they still got Mike Williams. You know what I mean? They still got Hall. They still got Allen, and then they got that dude that he got he got a little re, re, little rejuvenating over there, and they got the Bull Lazard too. He got a lot of chemistry on that offense, but you know what I mean? Na names on the paper don't equate to production on the field. Cowboys. So, you know, I mean, I got I got to see it on the field. I got to see it in real life. Hmm. I would have thought you have thought that Amari Cooper going to the Bills would have been a more impactful one because I think once you got Josh Allen really didn't have any weapons. Now he's got Amari Cooper. This is almost like a calmer. It's almost Stephon like when he got big. big. It's a calmer Stephon Diggs that can, is a great route, route runner. And look what that equated to, nothing. Like I could, I can see the, I can see the, the like the type of players that are on the Jets taking this trade and running with it and maybe taking it to the level that it should be. But there's nothing that has been shown to me in Josh Allen's past that told me, man, when he gets a number one wide receiver, he's going to take it to where it hasn't been before. I've, I've, I think I've seen the peak of Josh Allen. I can't. I don't think. We're going to see anything further. It's going to look nice in the regular season, though. It's going to look nice. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. There was another, there was a big injury that just happened in your game when you guys played Detroit. Aiden Hutchinson. 
Do you think Detroit could go out there and try to go get another pass rusher this year right now because they're in the right now mode? Or do you think they should just ride this thing out and see what happens? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm 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 totally for the, the the next man up type of mentality. But there are certain people that you ain't that it's not a next man up type of thing. Hutchinson being one of those people, you ain't just gonna get somebody to replace them, even if the person has the ability. They will not have the chemistry. They will not have what he brings to the environment. What he brings to that Lions culture. He's been there since the beginning of the rebuilding, so he is a integral part of not only that defense but to the culture of that organization and i think him getting injured is going to push everybody's ability up that much more and i don't think bringing somebody in to think they can replace a hutchinson that's like kobe kobe Torres achilles and it's like yo let's let's get in somebody's like you ain't you know what i mean it ain't gonna happen and i think like that injury like Sometimes that could propel a team to heights that they couldn't see before because they're they're not only playing for the city now, they're not only playing for themselves, but they're playing for somebody that they know if that dude's healthy, he's gonna be right in them trenches with them, right into that dog fight. So I think I think it's gonna propel them even higher than they would be given their type of mental fortitude. But I mean, again, we'll see. You know what I mean? Something on paper. Lines lines win playoff games. Forget defenses. It, you know, if you got an O line and a D line, you go in. Well, let me let me ask you this because I I'm gonna throw a couple names that have been out there. I mean, as you see, the Raiders are offing a lot of people now. They seem like they once you get rid of Devontae Adams, Max Crosby will probably be next in line. Let's look at the Browns. They're starting to show, show that they're starting to offer. A lot of a lot of their players. Next in line, Miles Garrett. Let's throw this one. Just throw this one out there that hasn't even stepped foot on the field yet. Could possibly sign. Possibly with Detroit. Hassan Reddick. But if Hassan Reddick signs with an NFC team. That means we get a high draft pick. Which one of those three do you think would be, a, we'll say, a fit for the Detroit Lions? If you had to pick. I'm, I'm, I mean, I think they're all like like fantasy world fits, where it's like, like, in, like they could fit in Madden, you know what I mean? But like, also, we got to think, like, what, what is that going to say to the Bull Hutchinson? You know what I mean? Like he might, he might get it. Like, yo, we're trying, we're all in this year. Da, 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 da. It's like you trying to bring somebody in to replace me. You know what I mean? Who, who's gonna, who's gonna say like, what's that, what's that's gonna make him feel like? Does he have a contract coming up? He does have a contract coming up. Is he then gonna get paid after Miles Garrett or whichever dude comes in? I mean, I don't think Reddick would give the type of production that that Hutchinson does. I mean. Of, of course, I'd, I mean, I'd take Miles Garrett, you know what I mean? But if that's a possibility, I don't think I don't think it needs to be. I think their offense is explosive enough that they could drop 28 to 35 points a game. And an NFL defense that can't hold a team to under 28 or at least like 20, it's like you shouldn't even be in the end anyway. You know what I mean? That is true. That is so true. Let me ask you this this last question. Which team do you think right now is possibly one player or one trade away from being Super Bowl contenders? I think the Niners are one healthy person away from being a Super Bowl contender. And that's Christian McCaffrey. The fact that they're they're three and three without him, you're 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 easily saying they're five and one with him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's like th there's a lot of teams that's like, yeah, you you maybe put this guy in this scenario, but like, I mean, it's 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 hard right now because everybody's um everybody's relatively even. There's still like the tiers. There's still like the Lions and the Vikings tier under that. You probably got the Niners and the and the Bucks type of tier, and then under that you got like the Eagles. 
And under that, you probably got the Cowboys. So. <laughs> but all, all this can change. All this could change. I've, I've seen a football. That's the beauty about football. What said last week, when you win, it, it, the, the narrative changes automatically. I agree. All you got to do is win. All oh. you got to do is win. Oh, Tell God. that to the Yankees that just dropped two runs in the ninth. Well, with that being said, thank you for watching Skyhawk, exclusively on YouTube. If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, email us at the number one Skyhawk at gmail.com. It's your boy, Daryl P. It's me, Michael C. And I don't know what to say. One thing, one thing only. You already know. Now let's let No birds. Let's make this epic. If you like this episode, just see who was the shocker last week and who may be the shocker the, the week after but i'm gonna tell you right now there's a shocker in week five